So with the launch of Paramount Plus here in the UK, it means there are now, by my count at least, 10 major streaming services that you might actually regularly use or want to watch here in the UK. And there are at least another half a dozen with some interesting things on there, and even more after that. That is a lot of streaming services. And when you consider that these are, particularly from my point of view anyway, I kind of think they're great ways to kind of, in theory, to reduce the cost of your pay TV services by cancelling Sky TV, by cancelling Virgin Media, and ditching those instead having streaming services. If you do start to have quite a few of these, then suddenly that doesn't make sense anymore. Because you might have stopped paying this over here, but you're paying just as much, if not more, over there. And let's assume... You know, you've got three of these going at the same time. And let's say they're three of the big ones, right? So you're paying between sort of six quid and maybe 11 quid for those. Could pay more, could pay less, but let's say that easily 25 quid a month, maybe 30 quid. That's 300, 360 quid a year. Huge amount of money to be paying on something, which frankly, I don't think if you are paying that amount of money, you're getting value for money at all. So what I'm going to tell you here is through my rules, these are the things that the way I approach streaming services, TV and film streaming services. Music's a little bit different, so that's obviously for a different conversation. The things that I do to really, really bring the cost down, to the extent that I pay way less than £100 a year, way, 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 way less, but even if you don't do all the things I've done, less than 100 quid, and still get to watch the vast majority of the shows you want to watch, if not all of them. So let's kick off with a quick look. Let's just look at some of those services first to give some context here. And I've got a table show you how much it will cost to get a monthly pass, monthly membership or subscription for these main services. And if they offer a discounted annual pass, how much that costs as well. So let's start with the big ones, alphabetical order, Amazon Prime Video, that is $5.99 a month here in the UK. If you pay $7.99 a month, you do get access to the broader Amazon Prime uh, benefits. But if you're focusing just on the video, it's $5.99. And you can pay £79 per year for the full Amazon Prime. Because that actually doesn't work out any cheaper if you're doing the, the $5.99 option. Apple TV, that is $4.99 a month. One of the cheapest ones. Uh, less content on there, although they are adding stuff all the time. You can pay $49.99 for that for a year. Uh, BT Sport, obviously just the sports uh, channels here. That is £25 for a monthly pass. There is no annual pass there. If you're doing this, pay as you go. Obviously, if you are uh, signed up directly with them, then you can pay for a whole year. It does work out a lot cheaper, but uh, that's a different kind of proposition. Discovery Plus, there are two options here. There's the entertainment one that is uh, $3.99 a month or $39.99 a year or Entertainment Plus Sport, basically adds in Eurosport. That's $6.99 a month or $59.99 for a year. Disney Plus, a lot of really good content on there. Uh, $7.99 a month went up obviously last year, $79.90 a year. Uh, Netflix, three prices here, $6.99 for the standard, standard definition, sorry, basic, sorry, standard definition, only one device at a time. Move to the next level up, which I think is where most of us probably are, $10.99 a month, you get HD and two people can watch at the same time. Or go up to premium, and this went up a couple of price increases on the trot, it's now $15.99 a month for that. You do get 4K viewing and you do get four uh, uh, profiles at once, but a lot of money there and there are no annual passes. Now Cinema, Now Entertainment, they both cost $9.99 a month. Uh, no annual option there generally. You might see the odd deal here or there, but generally they're $9.99 a month. Sky Sports via Now TV, one of the priciest ones here, $33.99. I'd never pay full price for that. And I'll talk later on about some of the discounts that I've got for different services. Uh, sometimes they do season passes, Formula One brings down 20 quid a month, things like that. But on as a whole, they are monthly, month by month. And the new one, Paramount Plus, that is going to be $6.99 a month. And an annual pass will be $69.90. I'm sure we will see some special offers on launch, maybe to bring that price down a little bit. But that is what's been published. And then there are some additional ones. Again, just half a dozen of the different things here. There are many, many, many more. Arrow, $4.99 a month, 50 quid for a year. BFI player, no, five pounds again, 4 99 50 quid for a year. BritBox, $5.99 a month or 60 quid for a year, although that is going to disappear and merge into something called ITVX later in 2022. You'll still have to pay to get that and these additional ITV features. We don't have the prices for that yet. Mubi, World Cinema, Classic Cinema, that's $9.99 every single month, so one of the pricier ones, $71.88 for a year. Shudder, lots of horror movies, that's $4.99 a month or just under 48 quid for a year. Or Stars Play, which has a lot of these uh, well-received, sort of critically acclaimed dramas from the States, which don't make it on the other channels appearing on there, $5.99 a month, no annual pass. That is at Price. full, okay? A lot of money if you're getting all of them. It's unlikely you're gonna get all of them, but again, like I said, if you just even get three or four of them, really gonna add up over a year. So how do you bring these prices down? And these are my rules. Well, the first one is, as I've just sort of shown by going through all those different options, there are so many, there are too many, there is no way you possibly can uh, really properly consume 
more than one, I think, at any time. Maybe two. Maybe a push you can get the take you know watch two lots of streaming services different shows at the same time but if you go any further than that you're going to watch what four or five hours of something from the different service each service maybe maybe a bit more if you're binging a lot maybe in the winter you're doing more of that but broadly speaking you are not going to be getting five pounds worth eight pounds worth ten pounds worth certainly not 16 pounds worth on that premium netflix uh, subscription so again broadly i'm saying here what we want to do is you want to focus on one service at a time, maybe two, ideally just the one. Watch as much as you can on that service. Binge it. Go through all the things you want to watch. Maybe that means you need two months because you haven't got through all the things you want to watch. Maybe three months. But you just focus on one service at a time. And then because the beauty of all these services is that they are, unless you paid up front for an annual pass, 30 day or one month rolling contracts, you can cancel and stop paying and then start another one. Start the next one. Binge it. Binge, 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 and repeat and keep doing this. There might be the odd time, of course, where there's a real hit show that everyone's talking about and you don't want to miss it. So maybe then, all right, you add that one back in and watch it over there. Or sometimes something uh, has a short time, particularly when it comes to now TV, those things can disappear. So you want to watch it while it's on. You know, Game of Thrones is coming this summer. Uh, you maybe you'll want to kind of uh, do that a little bit more to catch a particular show. But broadly, binge, cancel, swap, binge, cancel, swap, binge, cancel, swap. And let's say you focus, give you an idea how much this could cost you in a year, how much you could save. If you were to do uh, two months of the main six services, yeah? So two months of Netflix, two months of Now on the Entertainment Pass, two months of Amazon Prime Video, two months of Disney, two months of Apple TV, and two months of Paramount Plus, that would totally cost a whole year, 93.88. So compare that to that 300, 360 quid if you had three services for a full 12 months. That is a big, big, big saver. And you've got that flexibility to pick a mix. You might want to sort of reduce some of those, bring some of those other services into play there. I, I really think this is the way you're going to get the best value for money from all your streaming services because there's no way, as I say, you're going to get that if you stick with one service for a long time. Uh, the next thing I would suggest to you is to avoid annual passes. And let them, Broadly, when they do a discount for a year, it's you get 12 months of the price of 10. So unless you are absolutely 100% certain that you are going to watch that particular streaming service a lot for 10 month period, then I would go back to what I was saying just now, month by month and pick and choose. I appreciate here the difficulties maybe if you've got kids, particularly something like Disney Plus, that is a really, really good service for families. And you might want to have something particularly if kids want to watch the same thing again and again. So maybe you might want to make an exception and get Disney Plus for a year. But if you've got that for a year, then you can still pick and mix the rest of the year on the other services. Maybe one service you have all the time and the other ones you add in, you're still going to be saving yourself a lot of money there. It's a, a, not a real saving to pay up front for a year if you're not going to take full advantage. Uh, I would be careful here the next one is to watch out for your extras as well. Something like Netflix, for example. As I said before, I think most of us are probably on that middle plan, that 1099 plan, because you want that HD quality. Most of us do want that. And most of the time, I'll come to this later on, we maybe are sharing our subscription with somebody else. So having, even if in a household, having two people can watch at the same time is pretty good. If you don't need that, if you don't need HD and you don't need more than one person, then drop back down. You're overpaying if you're on that middle tier. And if you don't, I don't think most people need 4K. Yes, it is nice to have, but is it worth paying £5 a month for? I don't think it's noticeable enough, particularly if you do have it for the whole year. That's 60 quid a year, and you probably aren't going to notice it, particularly your back catalogue, which won't even be in 4K. So be careful of things like that. The only exception I would say here is Now TV, which has a very, very, very annoying boost feature. £5 a month, a lot of money, but this gives you HD quality picture and it also gets rid of adverts i really hate adverts so i'm willing to pay that but hopefully i'm finding other deals and savings to bring down the price of my main now tv and also i've got a whole video about this as well the cancelling now tv trick do that with boost when i've got it i've paid one pounds or two pounds a month rather than the full five pounds so it's possible to bring that price down as well but just be careful of those extras this next one's probably an obvious one, but look for deals, look for discounts. Over on the blog, BeCloverYourCash.com, that is where I share all the different offers that I find. Now TV, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, uh, Amazon Prime, any of the services really, Stars Plays, there's all these different deals that come and go. Netflix is not impossible to find discounts, but they are a lot rarer, but I will list them all over there. So I will link to them in the show notes below, the description below. Click through, see how you can save money. But give you an idea of some of the discounts that I've got right now, as we speak, as I record this. I have got six months free Now TV Entertainment. I'm paying two pounds a month for six months of boost. Obviously, I can pick and choose if I want to continue with that, but that's what I've got on offer. I'm paying one pound for one month of Sky Cinema. There was something I wanted to watch. It was a quid. I took advantage of that. I've got uh, a year free Amazon Prime Video. 
can't say no to that, can you at all? I've got three months free Disney Plus. And after that, if I want to continue for a month or occasional month, I can pay $5.99 with a £2 discount. Again, I won't be carrying on with it every single month afterwards. I've also got an eight month free Apple TV Plus code to, to use by the end of August or early August. And I had a three, four month free voucher, which I used at the start of the year for Apple TV Plus. So I'm paying very, very, very little. And I've got all of those services. Again, I can't possibly take advantage of all of them, but I'm not really paying, so it doesn't matter so much. You will not be able to find all those exact deals. Sometimes you'll get better deals, sometimes the same deals, maybe deals not quite as good, but you can find them. And if you do that, then that 93 pounds example I gave you earlier, 94 quid if you did two months of each service, the main service in a year, bring that down even more. I wouldn't be surprised if I pay less than 50 quid this year for everything all in. The exception may well be if I add in Sky Sports every now and again for a Crystal Palace game. Um, that's harder to kind of uh, you know justify. But again, very rare I do that. And I'll often try and get down to 20, 25 quid, if not lower. Right, what's next for you? Okay, free trials, an extension of what I was saying just now. Those freebies I'm talking about right now, they aren't free trials. They are special discounts I've got, but many of the services will give you a free trial. Uh, and you might think you've done them all, but remember that list I gave you at the top of all those extra services? You can get a month of Arrow for free, 14 days of BFI player, seven days of BritBox, seven days of Shudder, uh, seven days of Movie, and I think actually you can get 30 days for a different trick elsewhere as well. You know, even if you've done the main guys, well, why don't you try one of these other services? There's probably enough stuff to keep it going for a month. And if not a month, maybe it's just a week of that trial, that two weeks of that trial. And that's what you get. And why you've got that free trial, you're not paying for anything else. Uh, you might also be able to take free trials again, particularly here I'm talking about Amazon Prime, because they often, if you've had a trial for a month, a year later, 12 months after that, if you go into your Amazon account, they'll probably be pushing you another 30-day free trial of Amazon. Sometimes it happens sooner. You might not have to wait a year. You might be six months before you go in another one. And don't forget, if you are in a household with other people, maybe your partner, maybe some housemates, maybe some older kids, they can also take out these free trials. So it may well be, let's just assume there's two of you like me, me and my wife, there's two of us in the house. We could, if we didn't already have a year's free Prime video through that other discount, we could absolutely get two months each every year. And maybe we'd stagger it, maybe get a month when uh, the football's on the telly in December, and maybe another month in the summer just to binge through those box sets that have amassed in that time. So again, take advantage of those free trials and max them out, double them if you can, triple them even possibly, and try those other services. Now, the next one here is a really obvious one again, but I'm gonna talk about it more. Share your subscriptions. Now, this is something which you can do with all of them. Now, whether you should or shouldn't, that's gray area, and there are some things to be aware of. I've got a whole separate video that you should watch just so you know exactly what the rules are and some of the risks if you're giving your details to people who aren't in your immediate family. But do that and try and split the cost. Don't be that person who pays for all the services and everyone leeches off you. Even if you're very happy to share that with them, get something in return. Even if it's when you go out, they buy you a pint. Or maybe they pay for one service, you pay for one, and quid pro quo, you swap over those subscriptions. So you're you know, getting two services for great, but you're only paying for one. Maybe even more formalized, maybe they actually send you money every month for using it. Uh, but do bear in mind that this is something which Netflix in particular is gonna clamp down on. They've been trying over the last year and a half different things where they are kind of think, right, how can we get people to pay more? Because they've run out, they've plateaued in new subscribers. So they're trying to find ways that they can get uh, those people who are using other people's things to pay their, their own subscription. Now, one, one option here was like an extra two pounds a month. So you're not paying the full amount, but you're paying an extra two quid to get your own profile in addition. Uh, other ones, it might be forcing you to enter in a code every time you try to use the system or some of like that if you're not in the main area. They will clamp down. So take advantage just while you can. And once they do it, I wouldn't be surprised if other services follow suit as well after that. They're all gonna do it if they can, aren't they? The first one to fall, the rest will be like dominoes. Uh, when you are choosing a service to watch as well, this is something else to help you kind of, going back to the point I said earlier on about focusing on one service at a time and binging it, is to be a little bit pickier and be a bit more sort of um, focused in what you're gonna watch. So uh, there is so much on there and I've done it before. I watched an awful film on Netflix every week. Great cast, good director with a great pedigree. It was called The Bubble. We watched it. It was really awful. That was two and a half hours of our life we'll never get back. But it's also two and a half hours we could have been putting towards something else, which actually, if I'd done a little bit more research, I would have known that has got bad reviews, this has got good reviews, or bad word of mouth, good word of mouth. You know, so have a look at that, think about it. And I've got a note on my phone. Anytime I can see a review or someone tells me about a good show, I write it down next to the streaming service. So I know I can plan, right, we finished these programs on this service. What should we do next? Do we do another month of this? Or hang on, look, there's this program, this program, this program, this movie, this movie, on this one. Let's do that next. And we focus on that and we binge that and we're not wasting our time 
on the trash. I mean, my trash is possibly your treasure and the other way around, but still you get what I mean. Now there's also an element of this as well is to uh, check where you can watch things as well. Don't assume if you, you know, you think, oh right, the only place I can watch that is on this service. That's not always the case. Yes, there are exclusive programs. So we know, for example, the HBO shows, the new Game of Thrones, that is gonna be on Now TV. And we know that the new Lord of the Rings drama, that is gonna be on Amazon Prime. And we know that Stranger Things, that's on Netflix. Those things don't move around. But a lot of the other stuff that's kind of um, bought in, that can mix and match. It can disappear from one, appear on the other, and it can be on more than one service at once. So for example, right now, if you wanted to watch The Office, the American version of the sitcom The Office, you might think, well, I have to get Netflix to watch that. And you can watch it on Netflix. You can also watch it on Amazon Prime. You can also watch it on Now TV. So again, if you've already got one of these services or there's something else you want to watch, then go for that as well. Or some of the smaller services, yes, they do have some of those kind of cult indie films or the older films, which are harder to find elsewhere. Uh, but for example, what's the service here? It is called Icon Films, another one. I didn't even include that in my list earlier on. Icon Films, you can sign up for that. And they're really pushing the cult movie Drive with uh, Ryan Gosling. Okay, great movie, really good movie, great soundtrack. You think, actually, I really want to watch that. Oh, it's on this thing. I'll sign up to that to pay for that. But it's also on Amazon Prime right now. There is an app that I, call, I use called Just Watch, also a website. Really, really handy. You just type in what you want to watch and it tells you what services it's available on, both streaming and as a rental. So again, that's a great way to kind of help you focus what you want to watch, what you're going to pay for, bring down those costs so you aren't paying for too many. And the last thing I want to talk about here is, and this is, a, again, a really important thing that people often forget about. If you are paying for your TV license, I hope you do. I think that it represents really, really good value for money in terms of not just the TV that it provides, but also the radio, the online services and all the bigger things that are done, the sports coverage like Wimbledon and stuff. That's obviously for the BBC, funding the BBC, but you also do need that for your other free terrestrial channel, which ITV, your channel for, in fact, any live TV. But if you're paying that, if you are paying that money already, you don't have to if you don't watch any live TV or any catch up on iPlay, you don't have to, but if you are, you've got all their on-demand services for those ones as well. There are still consistently good dramas. Every month there's a good drama to watch on iPlayer and BBC, plus a good back catalogue. Look at all four, Channel 4's one. Fantastic comedy on there from the old days, like far olden days. The IT crowd, Father Ted, dramas like Shameless, all sorts of really big things they've done there that you might have missed them first time round. ITV as well, their ITV player. It's going to be ITV X later this year. That has a load of stuff as well. So maybe we talked about, you know, you pay for a different service every single month. Maybe some months you don't pay for anything because you already got the license fee. So you can take advantage and catch up on some of those shows that you've, you've missed on the BBC, ITV and Channel 4. Now, I'd love to know which streaming services you like, the ones that you think are the best value for money, plus any tricks you've got to help reduce costs. Put it in the comments below. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Here are more videos to help you save money on your TV and film watching.